We begin in Miami, where the Marlins made the biggest move of the entire offseason by locking up one of their own. They signed Giancarlo Stanton to a record 13-year, $325 million deal, the largest in baseball history. This is one building block towards a better future and um, a new way of life down here in Miami. In addition to Stanton, the Fish fortified their lineup by trading for the speedster D. Gordon and also Martin Prado and signing Michael Morse and the veteran all-star Ichiro as outfield insurance. And Miami was not done there. Matt Latos and Dan Heron were added to an already promising rotation as they await Jose Fernandez's return from Tommy John's surgery. South Beach appears as if it could have baseball deep into October in 2015. And now we head up to Atlanta, where it looks like it's time for the Braves to rebuild. We have more guys on the team that are new than, than returning, but that's just uh, that's just what we're working with this year. I think the, the, the front office has made moves to you know put us back in the winning column. One change that Kimbrough can speak specifically towards the pitchers. Irvin Santana, Aaron Harang, Jordan Walden, and Anthony Barbaro no longer are wearing Braves jerseys. The new look front office hopes that some of those voids can be filled by offseason acquisitions. Shelby Miller, Jason Grilly, and Jim Johnson. And the task looks tough for the Atlanta offense as well. After finishing 2014 second to last in the National League and runs scored, the team shipped away sluggers Jason Hayward, Justin Upton, and Evan Gaddis, while only adding the veteran Nick Markakis, along with Johnny Gomes and A.J. Persinski. Shooting up north, we head to Philadelphia, where there wasn't much brotherly love this offseason. The team said goodbye to Antonio Bastardo and Marlon Byrd, and most notably the veteran shortstop Jimmy Rollins. And while it appears as if Cole Hamels is not going to be traded, at least for the moment, if this offseason has taught us anything, it's that pitching and the market for it is unpredictable. Let's head to Washington, D.C. to explain. The Nationals scooped up the free agent Max Scherzer, and it was a blockbuster signing. The right-hander scored a seven-year, $210 million deal that has made the Nationals the odds-on favorite for the National League pennant. I think this team is capable of winning, and winning a lot. So uh, when you look at the near term and long term, this is an organization you want to be a part of. And Scherzer is right. Just take a look at the starting rotation. The rotation combined to go 72 and 37 last season, while Gio Gonzalez's ERA of 3.57 was the worst of the bunch. But not everybody is convinced the Nationals are a shoo-in. We end this trip at City Field, where the new Met Michael Kadire addressed the division rivalry. We've seen teams compile all-star staffs. And what that does is it guarantees them a chance to compete. But it doesn't guarantee them a championship. It doesn't guarantee them a division run. It guarantees them that every day they're going to be in it as our staff is going to be able to, too. After inking Kadire to that two-year, $21 million deal in November, the Amazons added the backup outfielder, John Mayberry Jr. And oh, by the way, they're going to get somebody back by the name of Matt Harvey. So who's going to shine in the NL East? The story is going to begin to unfold when the new look division heads to sunny Florida to begin spring training.